Shalom, welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host, Mark Vronich of Statewide News Service and jbiztechvalley.com. Well, Rabbi, we have a very a return guest uh, on the yeah. program today. We have Sheriff Craig Apple of the Albany, for Albany County Sheriff. And well, it's great to see you back here. You know? It's great it's, to be uh, back. Thank you for the you, invitation. Are you enjoying being sheriff? Is it uh, more I challenging it. than you thought? You know? I love it. I tell everybody it's the best job that you could have. A, you're giving back to your community. You're protecting your community. You're involved in all different aspects because the sheriff's job is a lot more than just like a true law enforcement or true corrections. Um, you know, we do emergency management, 911, stop, DWI, uh, stop DWI. And of course, we do, in fact, have our law enforcement and corrections. But um, well, you don't look any worse for wear, so you know that's good. <laughs> I'm feeling a little more tired, but it's it's not a bad thing. It's good. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. So t tell me what I think the biggest problem these days for the county in terms of law enforcement is the heroin problem? Well, that's one of the biggest issues that's um, been plaguing our community. Not that I know uh, from personal experience. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it has uh, the heroin epidemic, and, uh, and I, I will say it is an epidemic because it's, it's, um, it has just plagued our community. It's taken dozens and dozens of lives just from Albany County. I, I don't even know what the number would be in the Tri-County area, but it's a staggering number. There's overdoses all the time. And that's why we had to take the steps and go out and get the Narcan so you can, officers carry Narcan, which if there's an opiate overdose, they can spray it like a nasal spray. And if it is an opiate-based overdose, um, they got a good chance of bringing them back if they're there soon. And heroin so, is an opiate? Heroin is an opiate. It's a cheap opiate. It's a strong opiate. And um, it's taking dozens of lives in our community. It's probably taking thousands of lives nationwide. Well, it's terrible. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. And what about immigration? Are you I mean, you have yeah. a lot of immigrants in your jail? Well, jail or? you know, obviously immigration reform is a, is a very contentious issue right now. And, um, you know, it's like I explained, we recently did a forum and I said, listen, it's not a matter if I'm for it or against it. What it is a matter of is that I have a lot of immigrants in our Albany County Jail. And because just because they're, you're picking them up because of the federal crime? Of um, well, in? it's a twofold, sir. It's one, uh, it could be a crime they committed in our community and then they get sent to us and then come to find out why they're being processed or whatever, that'll, you'll find out that they're here illegally. So we'll notify immigrations and they may um, come pick them up, take them, get them arraigned, bring them back. And then we hold them as a federal prisoner as opposed to a state prisoner. Um, or sometimes they may call us and say, do you have 30 beds? We're bringing 30 um, immigrants up from whatever, whatever state they got located and then they'll bring them to us. Why would they bring them to Albany? Um, I'm not really sure. I know Buffalo is, a, is an area that has an immigration court, um, but you know what? Uh, I guess if there is a silver lining for it, you know, the, uh, we charge the feds, so we get a very high rate for housing a federal prisoner. Okay. Are you making more money this year than last year, or are you um, keeping track? A, a lot of, a lot more. Yes, okay. um, we had a budgeted amount of roughly 4.6 million, which we should hit in August this wow. month, yeah, middle of the month. So, what about uh, this video? in the conferencing that you have. Where That's going great. Tell, tell um, we me, kicked that off, I think, the last time yeah. we chatted. So and, tell me uh, about that. Yeah. The video visitation is something that, because we do bring in a lot of people from outside of our, of our community, sometimes it's not easy to get um, relatives or significant others to come and visit with them. So we're like, listen, maybe we could look at video visitation. So we started, uh, we reached out for a company. We um, were able to talk them into coming in and putting all the infrastructure in at no cost to the taxpayer. And then what we do is we do a profit sharing as the inmates sign up. Um, some of that money goes to the county. Some of that money goes towards the company of paying down the cost of the installation. So you're bringing in more money into the coffers. We're bringing more monies in that. Look, we're, we run a jail, so we're never going to make money. But if we can bring in revenue to cut the expenses off the taxpayers' back, right. that's what we're, our goal is. So, yeah. so are you finding fewer visitors? To the jet, to well, we did actually realign our visitation um, procedures. We don't allow visits on the weekends anymore, um, which also saved us three hundred thousand dollars in manpower. Which we were we we do weekday visits and then one night uh -huh. in case there's a hardship. But what the video visitation does is a it allows people to outside the community to visit. It keeps them from coming to our jail. And whenever you can keep people from coming in the jail you're limiting that exposure to bringing contraband in, to having some sort of domestic occurrence inside the jail, mm -hmm. having an assault on one of our staffers. So it really produces a safer atmosphere for everyone. 
Wow. So that's great. Yeah. So what's the cost and what's the charge? It's, um, I believe it's like $10 for 20 minutes, something to that effect. And, and it's uh, worth it for a lot of these It's worth it too. if you're out of the area. You know, you know what, really, if you can, um, in addition to the revenue and, and, and creating a safer atmosphere on an inmate side, if you can keep them in touch with society and their family and everything else, um, kind of gives them a little bit of hope. And, and really, my goal is I don't want you back. Mm -hmm. I like having the vacancy light on. Come to our jail, learn your lesson, correct your behavior. It's where they get it. Get out. Don't come back. So there's a video. So you can actually see the yes, person sir. who's calling? We have these um, kiosks located throughout the facility on the wings. You right. go in front of it. Um, your significant other or right. whomever. Uh, your visitor. Who, your, your visitor, visitor right. is home on a laptop. And, you know, oh. for lack of a better term, she Skypes in. Right, right. And um, you have your connection, visit, yeah. your oh, connection. And then yeah. at the end... That's screen it. goes blank and that's it. You have to sign up like you give, can sign up on a website. You you put in ten dollars at twenty minutes. It yes cuts off yeah. automatically. You can't re up or right. whatever. Okay. Right, and then you reschedule. I see. But it's good. It allows the rotation of the inmates. You Do know. they have to be during the same slotted times that certain by last name of no. certain? No, it could be. No, you could you pick your slots throughout the day, oh. and um, you can get on it. And okay. if you want to do four visits a day, you can do it. So are you finding things running better and more Things smoothly? are running better. Um, it's not picking up as fast as I wanted to. You know, I probably, I'd probably have an issue with my patience, but it's, it is progressing. It's getting better every month. You know, we're seeing a little bit more of, uh, of, yeah. a, of a spike, so. Well, that's well, great. People don't stay in the Albany County that long. That's correct yeah. as well. They don't. No, they're, under a year. It's a high turnout. Yeah. It's under a year, otherwise it's under a year. stay. Yes. Right. We have very few I should say long term, and long term to me would be over the year, and that's very. Um, there's maybe there's an exigent circumstance, or it is in fact some federal pri uh, prisoners. Do you have prisoners coming in, or in, in, people being at recidivism rate, uh, mm -hmm. where you have like the usual suspects? Oh, he's back again. Yeah, all the time. Um, you know, I, I'm very proud of the fact that we've done, we've created a lot of programs to lower that recidivism rate, and a lot of people never understood. You know, like why is that recidivism rate so high? Well, you got to do something to break that cycle. There was a point two years ago, and I'll never forget this, where we had a grandfather, a father, and a son in the jail. Now, where do you think the next generation's heading? Right, right. So, you know, that's the cycle that you got to try to break, and that's why we've created a ton of programs inside the facility, and I'm very proud of it because we're just a county jail. Right. You know, we're not a state facility. Things don't run the same every day. We don't have the same people every day for long term, but we've got... Um, you know, we have our jail dog program, which we're really proud of. We have stray dogs from the Mohawk Hudson Humane Society come in. The inmates train them, and we call it STAR, Sheriff STAR, kind of corny, but uh -huh. it's uh, um, <laughs> Steps to Adoption Readiness. And the inmates train the dogs, and then the dogs go back with some basic obedience, and they get adopted. And we've done 24, 25 of them, and um, over a dozen of them were adopted by our staff. They just fell in love with the dogs. Mm -hmm. Is that fairly unique? Because I visit state facilities more than, I mean, once in a while I do come into the Albany County Jail. But um, usually they say, oh, the, the inmates would say state is better because at least there's a gym. There's more facilities and more training programs, ASAP, which is yeah. alcohol, substance abuse treatment. And they say, well, at least here we can get some education. Yeah. In a county, maybe they're talking about Rikers Island, New York yeah. City. You just sit there doing nothing. It, it, and that's true. And that's always been my pet peeve, sir, with a, with a county facility. Um, I've been in this department a long time. And it, one of my biggest pet peeves was sitting in that cell for 23, 24 hours a day, not having to worry about anything, not having to do anything. But it doesn't, you know, it doesn't help anybody. And what we want them to do is, listen, find a reason not to come back. We have an inmate um, workforce, I call it. It's no different than you know people going out on the streets and picking up garbage and everything else and then coming back in. They've done some tremendous programs throughout our community. They've uh, you know in, after storms they go out and they pick up. They just cleaned a cemetery up in Waterford. I don't know if anybody had seen that in the in a local newspaper where a certain community um, there was being accused of neglecting the cemetery for you know dozens and dozens of years. Mm -hmm. So I read it and I'm like, wow. I, you know, be a good project. Well, sure as anything, the mayor of that community reached out for me and said, hey, could you do this? We did it. So and we cleaned that cemetery all up. So you had the, the deputies go I in? had the inmates go up. The inmates go Inmates up. went up uh -huh. with, under the supervision of correction officers. They um, hacked down trees, pulled, pulled up all the roots and all the weeds. I mean, trees four, six inches growing through, yeah. you know, grave sites. I mean, nobody, no grave should be desecrated that way. 
and I really have proud of the fact. cemetery for you to work on if you want to do another one. I'll tell you, the, anything we can do to keep the inmates working, the and it also the one that Zali yeah, told no, me about. You know, maybe we can. No, I really. You know, it gives them a sense of productivity. It gives them a sense know. of you know what? Maybe I can do something with my life right. rather than go back and forth to jail. It's a very much a Jewish thing. I always like putting the Jewish view on, <laughs> but that's actually the jail it was more what you were talking about is forced work. Because, like you say, what is wrong with these people? They can't get a job, or mm -hmm. they're in the wrong company, or like you're saying, the wrong family. And just get out there and learn how to be, and right. say in Jewish, a mensch, a person. Get up in the morning, you know, again, forget about the drugs and all the, right. the garbage that you're dealing with. Get a job, and, and you know, and a person wants to feel productive. And they that's want really to. The idea. They really do. A lot of these, yeah. a lot of my inmates, I find, don't know any better because it's, it's just going through the family. They're just going through the motions. So you know what? School. We take them out and we, we show them that you can do something productive in your life. We've had them, the holiday lights in, that you see down in the park, they revamped all those lights a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. saved them a ton of money. They've painted hydrants in the cities of Waterville, Cohoes, Green Island, Albany. Um, they're going to do a, embark on a project in Colony. I mean, the, inmate, the inmates... And this is part of their community service? Does it go towards that? It goes, no? no, they get nothing, nothing. from it. Um, they get nothing at all from it. With the exception of sometimes the people that, that where they're working in the nonprofit or whatever, um, will buy them some good food to eat for the day, which is good. And you know what? Yeah. They come back and they work that much harder for you. And um, it's a great program. Program we've never had to force anybody on it. They ask to go on it, and we've only had to throw one off it. <laughs> so this year I've got them building gardens in the back of the jail. So how many inmates do you have now? Um, as of this, it fluctuates 20 yeah. to 50, but around 850. Yeah, about 850. Yes. And how many go out on this? I have 50 working at any given day. Uh -huh. um, going out, I never send more than eight out, okay. eight at a rip. And what about uh, how many more beds can you, you know, how many more inmates can you take? I, I max at 1,049. Okay, so you can you have yes. room for another 250. Yeah. I'll take them. 150 to 200. Free yeah. room and board over here, okay. Mark, over here. <laughs> No, but I wanted to ask you about your canine unit. Can yes. you talk about your canine unit a little bit? <clears throat> Our department had done away with the canines um, eh, probably 10 years ago or so. And, you know, and I, I, I always, I wanted to, I, they can be useful and they're a great PR tool. They really are. The kids love them at events and things of that nature. And that's really something that we've, um, been pushing for with the sheriff's office is let the community know what we do and we want them to know that hey we're just not the you know the bad guy at the jail you know we've got an investment here in the community and we want to partner with you so we wanted to get back into it and I said uh, well what a better way to get back into into it to name the dogs after some of our past um, sheriffs and or just employees that may have passed away so our first dog was George is uh, <laughs> George, it's George Infante, Infante. And uh, he does eat a lot. <laughs> he does have as quite George an appetite. Did, yes. as George as loved to eat. Did, yep. yes. um, and and our second one is Mo, after Maureen Honigo McGuire, who was a great senior investigator and passed away with cancer. Uh -huh. So we have two right now. Do you have a gym coming up? Uh, well, I've got a couple of them coming up, actually. I really would like to get two or three more dogs on because, mm -hmm. A, I want to use them to continue to combat this heroin problem we have and other drugs. And, um, you know, we're always, we always want to keep a bomb dog in the area, especially being in the Capital District with the state offices and the county offices and the airport. We have a lot of critical infrastructure that we want to make sure. How much does it cost to keep a dog on staff? <laughs> it's very, it's, honestly, it's, it's um, my gosh, it's less than $100 a month. But they go home with the They go home deputy. with the officer, yes. Right. They're yes. always with the yep, deputy. They're always with the deputy, yeah. And uh, I know that over in Rensselaer County, Sheriff Mahar has a dog, uh, Harley, that's assigned to him. Does he? Yeah. Does he still have Harley? Yeah, Yeah, he still has Harley. So. I knew he had a dog. I didn't know if he's there. <laughs> when you're talking about bombs, though, would it let, I mean, God forbid, but what if a scenario, something happens in the state, you're Albany County, you would be called in? I well, mean, you think it's a federal offense or a state trooper? They, they normally will call whoever's close. Right. Get us the closest dog you can get, and then they'll continue. Because sometimes, you look, at if you had to search a building like the South Mall, for example, yeah. you would need a dozen, maybe more dogs to do that. So just keep calling them. You have to search a building like the Albany Public Library, you still would need three or four dogs to do this building. They tire out quick. Well, this State of the state message. Yes. The bomb sniffing dogs go through yep. for the, before that's in the yeah. that's in the convention center of the Empire State Plaza. And you really don't want a tired dog sniffing for an explosive. Right. You know, <laughs> you right. probably want somebody that's really fresh and ready right. to go. So you know, so they close off what about an hour before yeah. the event and the dogs will sniff, sniff around, around and yes. 
hopefully never find They'll anything. They'll take whatever dog power <laughs> yeah. they can. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, our primary was the, you know, being the sheriff, we were concerned also about the county buildings. And we have the airport. And it's, um, right. you know, what a better deterrent than to keep that dog around the airport. So, I, and you're personally a dog lover, I take it. I've got, yeah, I have two dogs. Yeah, so yeah. you're personal, so this is close to your heart. Yeah, man. I love them, I love them. I, they're great, you know, and uh, they never argue back with you. <laughs> they just bite. You know, they just bite <laughs> the you a little bit. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, what about this yellow dot program? That's a great program that the Sheriff's Association had um, kind of reinvigorated, uh, I think it was about two years ago we started it up again. And what it is basically is uh, you contact your local sheriff, no matter what county you're in, in, in New York, and um, you, they will send you a packet with, in fact, a yellow, a yellow sticker, a yellow dot. And you can put that yellow dot on your car or at your house. And what it does is it allows emergency responders that are um, coming to your house to know that, listen, we have medical information here, and all that information is on file, and if you're a diabetic or whatever the case may be. It would be um, on file where? Um, at the house. At it the it house. tells us the location for it, yes. On the yellow dot. Yes. It tells you the location because yeah. they don't always put it in the refrigerator. Well, that's like where we to. like, honestly, that's where we like to see it. I like to see it in the refrigerator. Why? Because it's universal and, and, it, and it will, nobody, it, 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 everybody can go to the same place. I don't want everybody to say your bedroom, then you get into a house, you don't know which bedroom's whose bedroom. And you or, find all sorts yeah. of things in the bedroom that yeah. you Yeah, <laughs> I'd rather go so to the refrigerator. So you want it in the refrigerator, maybe on the door? Um, uh, the shelf well, it on could the on a shelf, yeah, it could be, but it's in like a little a little package, and you can see where it is. Uh -huh. But it lets us know that that information's out there. Okay, wow, that's that's yeah. good. So, how do people get? They can go on. Um, whoever's viewing this can go right on our website and request it, and we'll send it right out to you. Okay, well, I'll do that right after the program. Yes. Uh, what about this RAD? What's RAD about? RAD's a great program. Um, we brought this to what the does it stand for? Um, Rape Aggression Defense, and what we did was um, I had been approached by a young lady who um, had been assaulted and she said um, you know you really should look at getting this program in here and um, and she kind of explained her story to me and I said wow that's a great idea and then I had to know another lady who was really into um, preparedness and self-defense and everything else and we spoke with her and she kind of got this program up and running and it's a great program and they go out and basically um, our deputy sheriffs, okay. correction officers, and in fact, we partner with District Attorney David Soares. Um, a few of his staffers go out. And what it is basically are the guys would go out and they put on these padded suits and the women kind of beat the heck out of them. They show them how to defend themselves and where to kick and how to kick and how to yell back at them and everything else. And a lot of times if um, that could stop an assault right there, some sort of attack if you've got a predator in a parking lot. That woman knowing what to say back, and it's really a confidence builder. It's not just about you know using physical force and everything else. It's a confidence builder as opposed to having her cower down in a parking lot. You know, it, it, to be able to come back at that person. Normally, your attacker is going to take off. They're not going to want a confrontation. They're trying to to pick on a vulnerable person. Like a bully kind of. Yes. Weakling. And when you go back at them, they take off. And um, it's been a great program. We've done thousands and thousands of women in the Capital District. Excuse me, say that again? We've trained thousands oh, okay. of them, defended them. <laughs> okay. Um, also, you have a, uh, your own website, yeah. craigapple.com. Yes. Why do you have your own? We like to keep everybody uh, up to speed as to what's going on, and basically we push out all our press releases, we push out our Twitter feeds, we push out everything. Why can't you do that through government? Well, we don't, I also want it separate from, I don't want people in um, the political world to look like we're using the county website or anything to that effect. So I try to keep it separate. And what, and on this, on your homepage, on mm -hmm. you have a, a golf tournament or something? That yes, you're... I have a golf tournament at the end of the, every year I have a golf tournament. It's one and of the last tournaments in the Capital District. It's and is it, is it a fundraiser for you? It's a fundraiser for me, yes. It's a personal, it's a political so, fundraiser. So that's why you have a separate website. Yes, yeah, because for political. You, yeah, I don't like could, to try to, I don't want anybody to think that we're using any county resources back and forth, so we try to keep it completely separate. Okay. Well, 487-5400 is your... That's our main line into the sheriff's office. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And what else, 
Well, just to even yeah. the staff. How much staff do you oh. have? I mean, yeah, just, I think we, we hover it before, but it's good to. Yeah, we hover yeah. around seven hundred and change, That's and a lot. Um, yeah, it's it's a big department. It's a very diverse department because we, again, we do the emergency management for the county. We have we answer the nine one one. We uh, have the jail. We have an advanced life Why support. Why do you answer nine one one? Like I'm in Bethlehem, but Bethlehem answers their own nine one one. It all comes through the county at, for whether it be a millisecond or a half a second. It all comes through the county, and we administer the 911 program. Yeah. Now it says here on the website the current staff of 420 for both sworn officers and civilians maintains the day-to-day -day operations of the facility. Yes. So that's 420, but then you have another 300. You said you have what's the total? 420 just runs the jail. Jail. Yeah. And then you have three. We have about another 80, not 83 to 90 paramedics and EMTs that run ambulances. We have another 20, 25 dispatchers. I mean, there could be a vacancy here or there. We have 120 law enforcement officers. We have fire coordinators. And of course, uh, you have the administration and support staff. And you don't have a public relations director? No. No. You do it all yourself. We do it on Facebook and Twitter. And <laughs> That's it. You yeah. Know. yeah, we don't. So. Uh, you know what, I, I thought about it at one point, but you know, I just go out and that's kind of my job is to promote the department and that's what we do. And you're doing a good job with it yeah. too. Uh, and you're the oldest sheriff's agency in the United States? One of them, yes, 1683. Six, established in the 1660s, it says. Yeah, we, 1680. were, we were actually, uh, 1683 was the sheriff's office. Wow. Yeah. So you're going to have a dog for each of the sheriffs well, in 1683? Well, you know, we probably have more dogs than we got people in the county. But uh, no, we'll, uh, we'll have a few of them now. So what do you, uh, you're up for re-election? Next year. Next year? Next year. Any announcement? You're going to run for re-election? Oh, I'd love to do another term. Yeah, it's no secret. I, you know, I, uh, I've got 27 years in. I, I know we got business yet to do. And um, I'd like to do one more term, I think, and wrap up a few uh, projects that we want to get kicking That's off. That's it? That, that on, well, we'll see what happens then. I mean, it's a long ways away. You only get you know? a four-year contract from the voters. Yeah, it's a, that's a long ways away. But I like uh, we got a few projects that I really I thought we'd be able to get up and running now. But we've knocked off like twenty projects in the last couple of years. You're and, how old now? Uh, Forty-seven. Come on, you got twenty more years. Good twenty more years you can uh, get. This we'll we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll, let's take it one term at a time. I, mean, I, I don't know. Uh, contrasting, it just seems to you that Albany County is on the forefront. I mean, is it, I mean, I guess in all your humble statement, but I'm just saying that compared to other counties and compared to all these different programs that you're doing. I think, uh, you know, we try to be as progressive as we can. And, you know, I hate to use the cliche. We try to think outside the box, you know, do what we can do to keep costs down and, and lower that recidivism rate. And you know what, we're here, we work for, we're one of um, the very few constitutional offices in the state of New York is the sheriff's position. And, you know, we try to keep politics out of it. We try to just do the right thing every day for the people. And whether you're a Republican, a Democrat, a, you know, whatever your enrollment may be, um, you know, we still just try to do the best for the public. And there's a lot of things out there that we can do, be doing to make it a better place, as corny as it sounds, to try to really make our community a better place. And that's what we do every day. You know, I, just from your beginning remarks, but the same remarks, is just a, you know, a policeman, you flash and a gun and a, you know, like yeah. a wild bill, you yeah. know, <laughs> it's, you know, like that, you're a police officer, you're going to shoot the criminal. But really, it's, again, you're more of a public servant. I mean, of that's course, it, when it, it comes it, from really. a crime, but it seems, you know, that, you know, people have to get that image. I mean, well, we try to social workers, but yeah. But, well, in an essence, are, we are. When you're yeah. a police officer, that's really what you're. You're a babysitter. You're a social worker. You're a law enforcement. You 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 do a little bit of everything, and and you do what you need to do to control the situation or to engage a community, whatever. I mean, this weekend I was in a dunking booth. <laughs> I mean, you know, we try to do whatever, and the people had fun. You know, they came out, put a ton of money down, and they threw balls at me all afternoon, yeah, and a lot of them got me wet too. But it's. Um, <laughs> You know, it's, it, it's, a, it's a great job, and we want the people to know that, here, look, we're working for you. We're here for you, and uh, we're very open, and we try to keep costs down. We're always looking for grants to bring equipment in and um, try to lower the expenses. We use a lot of drug asset money. Um, we seize money from, you know, from criminals, and then we use that to purchase police cars or to basically you know, augment equipment that we, that we need and that we have and that we could use but really can't afford. So we'll use drug money for that. And, um, 
you know, we, we're, I think we operate a very efficient and proficient department, and, um, and I, I love it. I think it's a and, great job. And that's not a damning comment on your predecessors either. No, mean, no, no, it's, it's not. Just, it's just that you're also talking, you know, generational gap there right. as well, you know. And, um, and your successor might say, whoever that might be 20 years down the road, absolutely. might say they're I think running we should a, more, do this. Yeah, absolutely. a more efficient and the, more... The thing is, is that you really need to advance um, with the community you serve. You really do. You need to move with them. And um, sometimes, fiscally, you can't. You can't do that. But, you know, as technology evolves and, you know, I was chuckling today. I was at a, at a forum with our local congressman, Congressman Tonko, and the bishop was there. And I'm watching him on his iPhone, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just kind of got a kick out of that, you know? I'm like, you just wouldn't think of that, you know? But he's well, right he's there. Well, he's got the Pope right in front of him. That's what he's doing. He's talking to the Pope. <laughs> but I mean, it's just, you know, it's the technology yeah. that's out there. And you're, you know, everything is right there at your fingers. And, and no one's going to say that was rude for the, Pope, for no. the Cardinal to, or the no. Bishop. To I did get a chuckle out of it, though. I looked over and I'm like, he's, he's texting on his, on his iPhone. What other crime issues are there out there that we need to know about? Well, the biggest issue. the heroin. All right. Take the heroin aside, but I, let's just start with the heroin again, because in a jail, like as of uh, two days ago, I ran the numbers and we had 149 drug um, arrestees drug, in our jail. Drug-related arrests. 129. Now, whether it's, whether it's marijuana or cocaine or heroin, whatever, but the drugs. Mm. But now, so that's going to leave roughly 700 additional inmates out there. So what are they there for? Now, the 700, you can break out some of the borders, whatever, and, you know, we're not sure what their crimes are, but... Um, a lot of the, the rest of those crimes will always trail back to drugs. And that's the problem, is that... I mean, they broke into a house, so they're there for a theft. To feed a while, yeah, to, their habit. To mm -hmm. feed their habit. And that's what a lot of things come back to drugs. And when they say that, you, you know, well, you know, you can't... I've, I've said a thousand times myself, we can't arrest our way out of the drug problem, but the, the issue that you have is that you need, people need treatment. They need education. And I really think that the state's been lax in that. And I've talked to our local assembly members, and um, they've been very responsive. But you know, there's only a couple of them, and you really need others right. to engage. And I think you know, you're familiar with the Dare program. Yeah. The Dare program is a great program, but it's for fifth grade. What happens to six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve? Mm -hmm. When when that's when they're you know they're dabbling with them and using them and experimenting with them. I really think the state education department should mandate that people get involved in the schools and for a half an hour um, a day or a half an hour a, a week or a month, whatever, um, talk about the devastating effects that, that drugs have on a family, on a person, and you know, share some drastic stories with them. I mean, you really got to scare the daylights out of these kids nowadays because there's no fear there. Um, so everything does usually have some sort of nexus to drugs. Um, but the other crime issues are, you know, your usual, your, your burglaries and things of that nature. But there also are a lot of cyber crimes out there, white collar crimes out there that, that affect a lot of people. I mean, we had an Albany Med case earlier this year that a lot of, a lot of families had their social security numbers taken. Right, and, the guy was from Kingston or something? Uh, well, no, he was right here in Albany. Oh, he was and, in Albany um, because there was something else his, from a guy in His Austin. wife was a nurse, oh, okay. and um, oh, they had taken oh, okay. a lot of personal information, and we ended up arresting them. They got substantial amount of time. Each one, I think the lowest amount was eight and a half years, the other one's doing 12 years. Yeah. But, um, you know, and Albany Med was a great partner in that investigation, but it's things like that that can mess up a person's life very quickly and easily. Yes. If you don't, and by the time you know it, it's done. You've, you've, mm -hmm. your, history's been, your credit history's been destroyed. So we're always trying to stay on top of that. And um, of course, there's a lot of, when you get into the, the iPhones and the, the texting world and everything else, there's a lot of um, stalking and harassment issues. And, but honestly, a lot of it always comes back to drugs. So what's your message uh, to the audience? What's your message uh, besides stay clean and stay out well, of trouble? Well, you know what, I mean... Be uh, vigilant? We, we, you, you really, I, I always tell everybody to be cognizant of your surroundings. Pay attention to what's going on. Pay attention, like, just the simple, stupid things that people forget all the time, like, you know, your, your lights and, you know, if you go on vacation, you don't put it on your Facebook that, oh my gosh, I'm in Wildwood for the week. This is awesome. And meanwhile, they're they got a rider truck at your house and they're clearing it out. I mean, real. just pay attention to what you're doing. It's great to post things on Facebook. I post things on Facebook. I'm going to post this on there in about an hour. Uh -huh. But you know what? Do it when you get home. Do it when right. you get back home. And just be cognizant of your surroundings and pay attention to what's going on and pay attention to what your kids are doing and pay attention to what your kids are doing on those darn cell phones. Um, and if you see a moving van, don't think that 
that's legitimate that yeah, you, know, you know question I, the moving van and I make question, sure that you know that your neighbor is moving and yep. it's just not someone coming to all rob the time. their house. You know, yeah. if I see something in my neighborhood, I'm all over them. And um, you have to be. And you just ask questions. And you know what? Don't be afraid to call the police. I'm not saying rush to 911 every time. No. But you know what? We are here for you. Call us. Don't act like you know, we're be you're being a pain in the butt. Yeah. A lot of people will say, I was going to call you, but you know, I didn't want to be a pain. But then you have all But then you find out the house got robbed. But then you, on you know, the Tonight Show or whatever, you hear of these 911 calls that say, you know, that are the silly yeah, calls. Yeah, I, I know. And those, you kind you of say, I don't want to be one of those. You do have some people out there that don't really think too clearly before they, you know, ask, uh, you know, some stupid question, question doing yeah. it. But, um, you know, but we're you there, a, we're there yeah. for the people, and I want yeah. people to use us. I want people to call us, ask sure. us questions, you know, and, and, um, and that's why we try to hit as many community events as we can to get our message out. Okay, that's great. Right, thank, thank you. Thank you, uh, Sheriff Appledad. We've You've been on the show many times, and you're always informative and doing good work and good programs, and we wish you the best of health and keep on going with helping the people of Albany yeah, County. Best of success. You got it. Okay.